uh, we got a preview copy of Skaven Tide, so thanks to GW for that. Um, and we are here to chat about Spearhead, which is basically the combat patrol equivalent for Age of Sigmar. I will say it is much better conceived than Combat Patrol. I feel like getting a Combat tro- Patrol game has been annoying because the rules printouts are like all over the place and they keep coming out with random ones. Like when a new codex comes out, there's a new Combat Patrol, but everyone in 40K just wants to play 40K. And Combat Patrol doesn't offer an interesting enough segue into the game where someone might want to try it. Whereas I feel like Spearhead has some pretty novel gameplay mix-ups. Yeah, Spearhead stands on its own quite well. Um, I am definitely very impressed with it. Like, it's it's way more fun than I was expecting. Because, you, you know, you look at it and it's like a small fixed army. Um, but there is a lot of wiggle room to customize it. I mean, it's it's not like a, a huge amount, but it's just enough to, like, to feel good about it. Where you can choose your enhancements, you can choose your, um, your regiment traits. Um, I forgot what they're called. Are they called regiment traits? I think they're regiment. So there's the factional ability, like for Skaven, there's mm-hmm. the one gnaw hole use. You can deploy one squad one time into the tunnels, and at any point during the movement phase, you can pop out of a corner. That's your faction ability. The second one is a regiment ability. For Skaven, it's either, I think, one, your two guys who can shoot get extra damage, or no, they get more, I think they get more dice. And then the other side, but you can only do that once a game. And then the other side is you just ignore retreat penalties for the entire game. And that's the one that I used. And I thought that was really strong because retreat cost D3, D3 mortal wounds. And ignoring that penalty entirely just meant that I could send the clan rats into the the fray. Yeah, they just like run in, get stuck, die a little bit, come back up because they regenerate D3 at the end of the turn. And then on the following turn, just retreat into another direction, just move blocking other people while the the rat ogres line up for a charge or the eshin sorcerer gets a screen so it seemed like very powerful and then the last one is your general ability for me on the skaven it was ward five uh, which i ended up taking it ended up basically mattering my claw claw beast claw pack basically ended up surviving a whole game um, all the way down to one wound Starting after first turn, he got hit, went to three runes, and he just uh, five of save, just five of ward die. save. All the, yeah, just didn't die. It was pretty crazy. And there's like, you can overcharge his rattling gun, so, or warp block pistols instead of it's d6, it's 2d6. So there's a fair amount of customization, and those happen at the beginning of the game after you see your opponent. Very yeah. kill team esque. Yes. How about you on the Stormcast side? What did you, how did you feel about your regimental abilities and all the other choices? Yeah, um, so the regimental abilities are both once per game powers. One of them is you can fall back and still charge and not take a penalty. Um, so it's it's similar, but it's once per game. Um, and then one of them is Blaze of Glory, and that is when you die, you fight on death. Um, you can deal mm-hmm. mortal wounds for models that are dying. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I did the Blaze of Glory, and um, I also... The Warlord trait, I took the uh, fight first for my warlord which made mm. him an absolute menace yeah fights first works very differently from this compared to 40k i played a little bit of 40k not a ton but strikes first happens in 40k the moment you finish a charge so generally what happens is the person who charges gets all the advantages but it doesn't seem to be the case in age of sigmar i don't know what it plays like in third edition because i've literally never played a game but if this teaser of Spearhead is how Age of Sigmar plays. It seems like a far more interactive game than anything that 40k has ever flirted with. And much more similar to Kill Team, because you can make three charges in a turn, but you still trade off back and forth for activations in those fights, which does give me kind of a little bit more back and forth compared to something like 40k. And something that, obviously, as Kill Team players, we both really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I you know as far as building the the small spearheads that came inside the big box set, probably as much as I'm going to focus on because I'm really not planning to pick up Age of Sigmar as a full game anytime soon. But the Skaven side came together very nicely, and twenty clan rats, most of them were two pieces. They snapped together very fast. What, how about how about the Stormcast? Yeah, Stormcast were all push fit. Um, it was it was pretty easy to build. Um, they've been fun to paint. I, I haven't totally finished them, but I've got like I've got a solid start, and I've kind of just been playing with some new techniques and stuff. And like Age of Sigmar models are very, very, very good. 
Yeah. So I don't really have any issues with the uh, way spearheads are being uh, shown to people because there's enough options when you actually play the game. And it doesn't seem like they're always going to be better or worse than other options. It really feels like you look at your opponent, you think about what they can do, and you can pick the thing that matches you. Or you just like this thing and you just want to go go ham with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the big changes, I think, for for us from Kill Team or from 40k, for you know, the closest analogs we've played, because neither of us has really played this. You've dabbled in Warcry, but Warcry is just you hit and you just deal damage. <laughs> right? If yeah. I remember correctly. Yep. So you uh, roll meanwhile, like your hits straight up damage. There's no saves or anything. Yeah, and Kill Team, you know, we have the hit and then we have the save roll, which is modulated by AP, which is nice. So there's a little bit of interplay between you and your opponent's stats. But I guess that Age of Sigmar, you know, this is coming from people who just never play it, is very much you can do all of the numbers by yourself. And that was probably the biggest change, I think, for me coming from the other side, from the sci-fi side. Yeah, because there's, right. there's no strength or toughness. It's just like your wound is is based on your own stat. Yeah, like this, the, the hit and the wound was interesting. And one of the spots where I noticed this in my game was... When I was playing the Claw Lord's Knob Beast, the Knob Beast managed to just like one shot an opposing model because it just deals more damage than, <laughs> than the one damage of the Halberd. And see, and having that moment happen where it's not as accurate, but it wounds better, and then it just like snapped and killed the dude, definitely felt like, ah, the beast is much cooler at killing things than the, the sad little skilled Vermin Lord on top who stabs people, but is not quite as strong. So that was a nice. Uh, matching a flavor to the the rules that I wasn't really expecting. Yeah, um, the prosecutors can throw their spears, and when mm -hmm. they do so, it does more damage than if they just stab you. Um, but it's more attacks in melee, so it's like they each just chuck one big chunky spear and like and then charge in. Yeah, it could like skewer three three of the clan rats like from a single thrown javelin, which I think is pretty nifty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The other big thing compared to 40k is that there is massive damage spillover. Because in Age of Sigmar, damage goes into like a pool of dice. And there's like crit mortal wounds, which basically circumvent the entire chart. Kind of like our current mortal wounds from crits. But in this case, it goes into a damage pool and then it you just pick off models until all the damage is allocated in Age of Sigmar. Yeah, so a single three damage hit could kill three one wound models. Man, which is which is kind of cool. So there's always a little bit of an eight like area of effect implication so i guess when the prosecutors are throwing their lightning javelin it's like a literal thunderbolt or like a literal piece of lightning hits hits the air and explodes which is kind of fun yeah how did you feel about the mechanics do you feel like there's any uh, mechanical overlap with spearhead and kill team i know that we haven't really talked about how spearhead uh plays so first things first, you have a kill team size board, which is kind of neat because you can just kind of pretend to play the boards by just putting on five objectives and then just measuring out the circles. And then you've got a deck of 12 cards. And I think this is probably the biggest mechanical overlap with another GW game that I kind of vaguely recall. And that's because I played a little bit of Warhammer Underworlds when it first came out where you have a secondary deck that is your objectives. But I think you found this other half of the deck very interesting. So you want to talk about the battle tactics a little bit? Yeah, so each card doubles as so your battle tactics. You can either score them or you can use them basically as like a stratagem if you're porting over from 40k or like a ploy from Kill Team. Um, so you, you get three cards per turn. And it's it really adds a lot of flexibility because um, you you know if you're if you're going for scoring or if you're going for an epic play and trying to be smart about when to choose each, I just think that's super super interesting and super dynamic. Yeah, like in our game, one of the most important ones was my opponent was able to call back reinforcements for cavalry, and he got the full cavalry back. And when I tried to do something similar with my rat ogres, I got none of my rat ogres back. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, um, and then there, there's a single access to a reroll a charge, which can be super duper clutch, but um, yeah. you might want that as a scoring opportunity. So it's... Uh... Yeah, so basically you're, you're open to three primary victory points a turn, and then you're open to three secondary victory points a turn in Spearhead. 
But if you want your more powerful moments, you give up your tactics. And taking the vaunted double turn, the big thing that Age of Sigmar has that Kill Team kind of has, and 40k definitely does not have, where you take the last activation of a turn and you take the first activation of the next turn. Obviously, as a Pathfinder player, I've done a lot of that with a Grenadier chucking an EMP grenade and then Worthy causing to chuck a fusion grenade. So having that be baked in and then the battle tactics reflect that where on the turn that you go second and then you go first, you give up potential battle tactic scoring unless your opponent lets you do it. So if you choose to do that play of going last and going first, you need to make it work and end the game, basically. And when I did it, I was able to basically kill all the units on the midboard <laughs> and hold four objectives, and then my opponent was not able to take those back. So when I did it, it did work. But it was risky because it is a guaranteed minus three points. You better be able to make up that three-point delta. Yeah. Did you have a, a turn where you guys took the double? Um, no, there's no doubles in, in my game. No double turns. Yeah, so Kill Team definitely has a little bit of that element, and for wider teams, you definitely get more chances to do it. When you're playing like a vet card team, you could take the last activation pretty much guaranteed on the first turn. And generally, if you stage yourself correctly, your opponent might be able to get one operative, but he won't get whatever your second tier of operatives. So you'll, he'll, you like dangle out a piece of bait, your opponent takes that, and then you get a chance to deal with it. But I did like the idea of, you know, over four turns, you've got your 12 cards and you can just play those and you can either use them as secondaries or use them as powerpoints and i could definitely see a little bit of replayability replayability for spearhead when you start thinking about what your opponent could draw which is definitely a big part of other card games yeah because like if you see that your opponent has already drawn the regenerate cavalry or infantry card then you know it's gone so you can just punch the cavalry or infantry much harder or vice versa, or you know, you know, counter charge is possible. So I think there is a fair amount of replayability there. Yeah. And um, we yeah, were both we were both curious about the turn one charging because it is a thirty by twenty two board, and I think cavalry. I think my novice has a nine inch move, and I think most cavalry has a ten inch move. So you can definitely get a turn one charge. Yeah, and like the prosecutors have a ten inch fly move, and then there's a one like there's like a once per game thing where you can run and still charge. So you're like you don't even have to run and still charge. You can just like jump over the terrain, be outside of three inches because that's the closest you can get, and then just go for the three inch charge. Yeah, but I think for its credit, I think something that Kill Team does well is because you're using fewer dice, things tend to be a little bit swingier. I had someone's hitting on three, wounding on three model, try to hit some try to hit some clan rats on the back line. And just like in Kill Team, when you got your four dice on threes and you roll three ones, it's like, oh, nothing happened. So my opponent like had five attacks, swung on threes and threes, and it just whiffed three attacks up front and then whiffed one attack on the entry. And we're like, what has happened? <laughs> so I think the law of like little numbers where anything can happen actually did come up and i feel like that's a big part of why kill team tactically feels so rich because you are not always able to guarantee everything and you have to adjust to your situations and i think spearhead is going to give those moments to a lot more players than something like age of sigmar or 40k will yeah and not only that but with the turn one charge it really just like leads to immediately being in the action like there isn't a wasted turn you don't have to like stage for yeah. a turn two attack like you can just get there and just get started um, which I think is great. Uh, so you've got to like be careful with like how you deploy and try to like screen properly. Um, and then they're like units are just like reinforceable by having the reinforcements keyword as well as using the battle tactic. Um, yeah, there were so... two different ways to regen your army. One of them you bring at I think a at a random strength. One of them is for every model slain, you roll a five up and you get it back. And then the other one is if you are a reinforceable unit like the clan rats, you just set a duplicate unit up yeah the whole unit yeah <laughs> yeah and that one was really crazy because effectively you have 20 clan rants in the box or in the spearhead but you effectively have access to 40 of them because there's two bricks and they both have reinforce which means that both of them can get brought back once and they regen two d3 models a turn so over the course of two a whole activation you'll get two d3 back as long as none of not all of them die so you really have an incentive to try to keep them alive just a little bit it really is just an enormous swarm of rats. 
Mm-hmm. I think that kill team players probably will get a kick out of this if you're even a little bit interested in the Age of Sigmar-ish mythology because it's not quite 40k and it's not quite fantasy, but it does exist in this fun little space where maybe Magic the Gathering kind of exists, where it's like medium high fantasy, or in this case, very high fantasy, but because there's like plane hopping, there's a lot of room for the different cultures to feel represented in the game. So all the factions feel very different and it's a nice little flavor change, especially if you're interested in some something that they're offering on that side. So like Kill Team doesn't do the big elite models that great. Like Space Marines are quite good, but four custodies is only good against other Space Marines. Whereas if you play the three ogre, the three ogres from the Sons of Behemoth, where you've got three chunky models that have like eight wounds and four save or something, and they throw boulders and they can be reinforced. That probably does feel substantially different from anything that Kill Team is going to set up anytime soon especially when you're throwing big rocks at tiny little humans again not a thing that kill team does because kill team scale for as much as i love the game is much more miniaturized it's very much like city scale or like building to building combat rather than it being army scale this did feel like i was controlling a tiny army i I think that's something that both of us felt right yeah and like there is definitely a clear path into getting into the bigger game modes like, it seems like it would be really, really easy um, just, like, build out the rest of the kit. And, I'll, like, I don't, I don't know the points and I don't know the game, like, super well, but I'm pretty sure we could each make a 1,000-point army out of, like, the, the collection that comes in the box, um, which is pretty cool. And then, you know, just, like, a couple kits away. I've got the Dominion box floating around that I've, like, assembled a couple of models and kit bash some things so i'm sure i could muster up some of that and and you know who knows maybe i'm close to 2000 points maybe i've got 2000 points i guess we're gonna you're gonna have to spin up another podcast on the side just another age of sigmar podcast (laughs) yeah I think for longtime Age of Sigmar fans, I think this would be a fun way to kind of dabble in other in other factions. Because I think just like in Kill Team, being able to play different factions and have them all feel distinct is really nice. Whereas like in Combat Patrol, I don't know, the the teams all feel they don't feel samey. But it's also there's not quite enough flavor oomph for me to care that much. Because I think in Combat Patrol, sometimes you only have like three units, and 40k's driving force of game design where you just like I do everything then you do everything feels very jilted especially with like three or four units whereas like in this one I think the most that will like I had I think five activations which felt sizable and then for the stormcast how many activations did you have I think you only have like 10 models right yeah 10 models and a token four units total so it's like two characters and two squads but they feel distinct. They feel like Stormcast because they are just tanking it out. Yeah. Epic heroes all. Epic heroes that explode into balls of lightning. Although I guess that's not in Spearhead, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess there was Blaze of Glory where they they do right mortals when they die. Which is amusing. Yeah, I think I think there's definitely something here for people to chew on. Mostly in I think the the smaller board is nice, and the battle tactics giving you a very different moment to moment gameplay compared to just playing a raw army game where you're just like, I'm gonna go score three objectives and blow you up. I think that definitely was a nice change of pace and something that Games Workshop has been doing better in general as of probably like ninth edition forward when they started doing these card decks. Yeah, or like a tenth edition was, forward. And there was like a little bit. There was a, a mission pack in like eighth that was pretty similar, where it was like you draw cards and you score them, um, which was mm. my favorite game mode in eighth edition. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense that a dynam- dynamism being forced on you makes for more interesting gameplay. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Um, right. Any other final comments about Spearhead before we wrap it up? No, I just, you know, thanks GW for giving us the Skaven Tide box. I wasn't really sure what to expect coming in, but, you know, color me a fan of Spearhead. I know locally in my shop I'll be pushing it a little bit harder because I did think that the experience was fun. And it definitely seems like a very good hopping in point for new players to the system. And at a $140 price point for most of the Spearheads, it's easier to get into than 40 k Yeah. I'm definitely uh, enthused, and I will play it at least a few more times. Yeah. All right. Well, 
thanks guys for coming by and uh if you're here from goonhammer uh say it in the comments see you guys